You would think on the surface, starting a rookie quarterback, albeit one that has a lot of college experience, but starting a rookie quarterback, his first NFL start on the road in Seattle might be a bit of a handful. And that the idea of you bringing along your rookie quarterback the right way, not putting him into situations where he might lose confidence, hey, an opponent like that might be a reason why. You start with Jared Stidham, okay. correct? Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Week two, Pittsburgh Steelers mm. and likely Russell Wilson. Mark, if Bo Nix is not the starting quarterback for that game, can you imagine the field day the Rusties are going to have? It's can, spicy. can you imagine the field day the media will have about Sean and the Broncos ducking mm-hmm. the smoke? Yeah. And what a bad look it is for Sean that the guy he handpicked isn't on the field in the game in which the quarterback, you decided, nope, I want nothing to do with him. See you later. And he comes strolling into town with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and right, your guy isn't playing? Plus, you're Sean Payton, and you've taken a lot of heat for your decision about Russell Wilson, and you've taken a lot of heat from people who really don't know, sitting there saying, well, you didn't adjust your offense, and you didn't, and you didn't, full well knowing, dude, I couldn't adjust my offense anymore to fit Russell Wilson. So if you don't think that Sean Payton is the com- the type of competitor that wants to shove it up Russ's can. Okay. Good. Okay. I'm prove- glad we're- okay. We're- I'm glad we're going down right. this road. So this, this- – this is there is ego involved in this. Oh, there man, I always say this. You think the egos are big in the locker room? Go upstairs to where the coaches' offices are. There's huge ego involved. Absolutely. The other thing is, listen, man, Seattle's got a new head coach. Comes from Baltimore. Young guy, defensive guy, and you look what they've been able to do especially with what they, they've turned in from the Russell Wilson hole they got. I mean, defensively, Mike, they got, they've got they got a secondary. Devon Weatherspoon was a draft pick that they – the first-round draft pick they got is outstanding. Reek Woolen is a guy that was a pro bowler. Julian Love, they just re-signed him. Michael Jackson, the other corner. Um, they're – like, they're loaded. They, they've got – and – Mike, what's his name? Mike McDonald, the head coach. <clears throat> he is, um, man, he is one of those guys that is very, like, it is, this is going to be a, a baptism by fire. And I, for one, I, I I think that's, I think that's the best possible place really? to start a young play. Just throw him in. Deep end. Here you go. Swim. See if you can sink or swim. Okay. All right, so you you don't buy the idea that rookie quarterbacks in the past, highly drafted rookie quarterbacks in the past, have been ruined or damaged prematurely because they were thrown in too early. I believe you can ruin a rookie quarterback if you don't protect him, if you ask him to do things he's un- incapable of doing. Like, uh, yeah, you you can if you get a guy hit seventy six times over the course of you know a season. But as far as the situation you put them into, in this case, on the road in Seattle, home against Pittsburgh mm-hmm. and Russ, that shouldn't be a reason to be scared away. Because if you look at any other possible start on the road, start at home combination of all the opponents on their schedule, the way the schedule plays out, right. I don't know if you can have a worse scenario than than this one. In terms of, you know, throwing your rookie quarterback in with the idea that's going to be you know, kind of challenging. I mean, I mean look at it. you. You could have gone at New York, followed up by Vegas as your home opener. I guess you could have gone at New Orleans, which would have had some of its uh, accompanying Sean's return. But then home against Carolina, open the season. You could have had at Kansas City, I suppose. But then you come home to play Atlanta. You could have been at Vegas to start the season, then come home to play Cleveland. My point being is that I don't know if you have a a more challenging environment for a rookie quarterback to be put into than at Seattle and then home against Pittsburgh and Russ. 
with all the stuff that goes around surrounding those 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 stadiums, but, those fans, the, the, the storylines, all that. But don't you want your guy? Don't you want your guy? Don't you want a baptism by fire? Don't you want your guy to be put? I don't so know. They, I, I, I would I would think so, Mark. I yeah. would think so. But I I'm, I kept I keep being told by NFL people. Like yourself, that well, you know, sometimes it's better that these guys sit for a while and Depen- don't throw them in right away. Obviously, and- depends on the guy, and it depends on how you know mentally tough the guy is and where he is in his development and all those things. Like all those, every guy's a different entity. So yeah, I get, I get all that stuff. But this dude, sixty-one starts. This guy is your hand-picked guy. This guy's the guy, you know, you said coming into the draft process, you know, it's a, it's really a hard evaluation. Some people make it harder than it, it, it should be, and we're going to be really good at this. This is your this is your proving ground. This is what you said you were going to go do, so go do it. And and I will tell you, listen, listen I, I had a long conversation with Sean, um, this is years ago, about just about game planning. Say, so, hey, man, I just want to pick your brain. It was off season. Pick your brain about game planning. What's the number one aspect? Like, where do people lose themselves? And the answer was this. He's like, a lot of times you see kind of a juicy matchup. And you want to attack that juicy matchup. But you know that juicy matchup puts you in a position where you expose a player somewhere along the line that's a weakness for you. You get a player in a one-on-one situation that that player can't handle. And young coaches oftentimes will attack the juicy matchup and just say, we got to hold up over here, hold up over here. And you may get it two or three times and you hold up. But inevitably what happens to you is you slip up, you put the one player in a position that he can't succeed, he gives up a sack, strip, fumble, touchdown the other way, and you lose by three. And so the whole thing was you've got to mitigate your own potential disasters. Or that's more important than attacking a juicy matchup. And ultimately, you walk into that. My first start, my first start real quick, was in Philadelphia against the number one defense in football. Reggie White, Jerome Brown, Mike Pitts, Clyde Simmons. Mm. I mean, I could go on and on with all the guys that they had. All right? So – that was that was the number one defense in fo- in football. I'm making my first start as a tenth rounder out of Idaho. We ran the ball like 52 times, right? You know why we ran the ball 52 times? So I didn't have to throw. So I didn't have to pass protect 48 times. Like that game plan was specific to we're playing a couple. We we were playing more than just me as a rookie, but several different young players. We're going to keep it simple, stupid, and we're not going to have any mental mistakes. That goes to the coaching staff, and that's why baptism by fire, you're going to go in here, we're going to protect you, you're going to play well, you're going to come out of an environment in Seattle where you played really well, and you're going to have confidence that's going to, that, that's going to propel you to your career. That's how I look at it.